For me, the golden era of video gaming was the 90s. Not because it was a point that video games were making a massive and very rapid breakthrough, but because it was very much a time of experimentation. It was a time where market research didn't exist, looking for the latest gaming trends. And what we got was each and every video game being genuinely different and unique, even the so-called clones. That is the reason why I have such a passion for the indie devs. There is no trend following with their games, there are no rules, there is only creativity and experimentation. It is what video games were always supposed to be about, and for me, it is like reliving my childhood each and every time. And the game we're looking at today is one that brings me right back to that golden age of video games. Thrusty Ship is a puzzle game developed and published by In Principle Games. It released on Steam January 23rd, 2019 for PC, Mac, Linux and Steam OS, and is priced at €15.99. While not a game that will appeal to everyone, Thrusty Ship is nevertheless an absolute nostalgic indie gem, packed with generally excellent level design and countless hours of fun and challenge that will bring any retro gaming fan right back to video game memory lane. There is no plot in Thrusty Ship. Instead, it's all about the gameplay. The main objective of Thrusty Ship is to complete each level by navigating your extremely thrusty ship, collecting the green cores that are scattered throughout, and making your way to the landing pad while avoiding the many hazards that are in place to stop you at every turn. A certain number of cores is needed before the landing pad will unlock. That sounds easy enough, you might be thinking to yourself. Well, think again. In Thrusty Ship, your ship only has a certain amount of fuel which burns up very quickly. This results in you not only having to navigate the map while avoiding hazards, but also making sure you don't run out of fuel by strategically making your way to fuel pickups and refueling stations. Though when you do run out of fuel, you have two emergency boosters that allow you to make a short burst charge each to reach a fuel pickup if nearby. This is why Thrusty Ship is regarded as a puzzle game. Each level is a puzzle in its own regard as you need to figure out what is the best way to get around the map and its hazards all the while making sure you don't leave yourself stuck without a fuel pickup. It takes some planning and a lot of practice. However, before I go making this sound like an absolute hardcore game, that is not the case at all. In fact, it isn't nearly as strict as you might think. If you die in a level, you can respawn at the last checkpoint you activate. Upon respawning, any fuel pickups too will reappear with any cores that you collected beforehand remaining collected. There is also no limit on how many times you can respawn in a single level. So if hardcore completionist gameplay isn't to your liking, you can still enjoy the game for what it is. While Thrusty Ship is a purposely difficult game, it is not one that doesn't stop those not looking for a hardcore experience from playing it, which makes it an accessible game for pretty much everyone with a generous amount of checkpoints scattered throughout each level. As a concept, it works extremely well. It may not sound like much on paper, but when you actually try it out for yourself, it is immensely enjoyable and addictive while being an experience that definitely shows its old school gaming roots. Anyone who grew up enjoying such games will immediately feel that nostalgia and it brings them right back to their childhood. We haven't even reached the tip of the iceberg of what Thrusty Ship entails. In fact, we've only just touched on what the actual main objective of the game is. We haven't even gotten into the actual detail yet. While there is a minimum amount of cores needed to finish a level, it is worth spending the time collecting as many of them in each level as possible. The reason for this is that the cores act as a form of currency that is used to purchase and unlock new ships. However, you cannot just keep collecting the same cores over and over again and grind your way to new ships. In Thrusty Ship, each core is regarded as unique, therefore only each unique core is added to your total currency amount. So if you want to keep buying new ships, you will need to keep collecting new cores in new levels. This is a great design choice as it forces the player to get out of that comfort zone and challenge themselves, as new levels adding in new hazards and features can be quite intimidating. With how the collecting of the cores work, it forces you to face the new levels and while challenging, it is always satisfying when you get those cores to unlock that new ship you wanted. Each ship requires a specific amount of cores to unlock each new ship requiring more than the last. Each of the ships has its own specific strengths and weaknesses. For example, some ships have more speed while others have better control, while some have a bigger fuel capacity or force making it easier to destroy junk. We'll get to what junk and its purpose is shortly. As you buy new ships, more will start to become available to you, with the later ships having special abilities that are unique to them. An example of this is the ship called Magnet that has the special ability of Core Attractor. These are considered the elite ships and are extremely expensive with Magnet alone costing over 500 cores. Each of the ships having their own strengths and weaknesses makes them exceptionally useful with particular levels. For example, levels that contain a lot of junk, it's handy to bring a ship that has a lot of destructive power, while a level that doesn't have many fuel pickups, a ship with a higher fuel capacity and better control would be best suited. This results in you needing to identify what ship works best with what levels in order to make your life as easy as possible. It is possible to complete every level with any ship, but some are definitely more suitable for particular levels than others. Having the ships and levels work like this results in adding an additional layer of strategy to the game, 
that really brings its depth to a whole new level. And when you figure out what chip works best, it is extremely satisfying. Let's move on to the level design of the game. There are a total of 72 levels in Thrusty Ship spread across three different environments, with each environment introducing new hazards and elements. The first environment is Apex, that contains a calm light blue colour palette to it. The second is Magnar, that takes a fire volcanic approach to its colour palette and environment. The third and final one is Hemner, that has a dark red colour palette with the environment being very mechanical while having a slight horror vibe running through it. The three environments are each very unique and offer a breath of fresh air. They are needed as by the time you reach level 20, the environment starts to to wear out its welcome, but by then you will have access to Magnar giving you a fresh colour palette to feast your eyes on. But what makes the environments work so well is that they each represent the increase in difficulty. The blue of Apex signifies the ease that comes with the level. The volcanic design of Magnar signifies an increase in the difficulty, while the red of Hemner gives the impression of the ultimate challenge. And that is exactly the way it is. As previously mentioned, levels contain hazards with the further in the game you progress, the more varied and plentiful the hazards of the game become. Hazards include junk, various lasers, bouncers, and black holes. Junk acts as a blockade but can be destroyed if rammed into hard enough. Some junk also contains cores and must be destroyed in order to obtain them all in a level. Certain levels contain shield pickups that make it easier to destroy junk as it is instantly destroyed upon your ship hitting off it. There are several types of lasers which are found in the Hemner environments. Yellow lasers deplete your ship's fuel instantly. Red lasers make your ship overheat causing it to blow up in a few seconds. The blue lasers temporarily freeze your ship making it great for rapid sliding but shuts down the ship's engines while frozen. Black holes suck your ship into them, forcing you to use your momentum to get back out, often it costing quite a bit of fuel in the process. Bouncers are more of a feature than a hazard, as they can be equally as helpful as they can be a pain. Much like in a pinball machine, if your ship hits off them, it is blasted across the map at a lightning pace. It is great for moving large distances quickly, but getting the bouncer to send you in the right direction is a challenge all on its own. The hazards are very well designed in how they impact the player, along with the way they are implemented into each map. Very often hazards act as a main feature of a level in one form or another, resulting in you being forced to interact with them in some way. For example, in one level it's like a multi-level ice rink, where you need to slide your way through each of the areas one after the other. This is all the while making sure you get through each door before closing, forcing you to reload a checkpoint. Another example would be a level where the centre is surrounded by bouncers, that are needed to be used in order to move around the map effectively, to lower your fuel consumption as much as possible. The hazards are designed in a way that works perfectly with the gameplay of Thrusty Ship. They aren't just made and put into the game without any thought. They each have been very carefully designed and then used to make interesting and challenging levels, with them often acting as a main feature, and how they are used to design a level is at times quite genius. Along with the hazards, levels sometimes switch between gravity and being in a void. With gravity, your ship naturally has weight to it, making you need to continuously keep it afloat and in the air to navigate through the map. When in the void, however, gravity doesn't exist, causing you to float around, resulting in even the smallest of force or propulsion, making you change course and move further with less fuel. The switching between gravity and the void changes the rules of movement with your ship completely. The gravity results in you needing to use your fuel to get around, but with the void, you can get further with less, but controlling the ship is much more difficult. It results in you having to change how you control your ship and your method of moving around, adding to an already staggering layer of complexity that the level design already has. As for the levels themselves, they are each very unique and quite complex in design, despite the game's somewhat simple nature. At the start of the game, the level design is quite basic, with small and straightforward enough layouts, but the further you progress in the game, the bigger and more complicated the design becomes with hazards being more plentiful, along with the player needing to interact with them in order to progress. Indeed, with how the levels are designed, they are difficult, even the early ones. At times it is a game that can get quite frustrating, but it is the good kind of frustration. The kind of frustration that you'd get when playing the old Crash Bandicoot games, or other titles with challenging level design, which is another nod to its old school roots. Each of the levels is extremely well designed, and at times quite unbelievable in just how complex their layout is. The amount of testing and redesigning levels must have gone through is incredible. As with some levels, one misplaced hazard could potentially break the whole thing. If there was to be one issue I would have with the level design, it is that some of the levels have some very tight corridors, where you need your ship to be at a very specific angle for it to get through. These moments are few and far between, but they feel a bit extreme in a game that is already as challenging as it needs to be. Other than that, however, there really isn't much to complain about. Despite my complaint on the tight corridors, the fact that each and every level works to utmost perfection is an achievement alone that the developer should be proud of. Few developers could ever pull off the level count that Thrusty Ship has, let alone create such complex and genius design at the same time. It is intelligent, it is challenging, and most of all, 
a lot of fun to play. In regards to progressing and unlocking new levels, it works a bit differently in Thrusty Ship compared to other similar games. Here the unlocking of levels works based on an experience system which works in conjunction with a level up system. How this works is that as you play you gain experience. Experience points are constantly gained, even if you run out of fuel or blow up and when replaying levels. But the more successful you are in a level, the more experience you gain in one go. So when perfecting a level, you will gain more experience than if you died a number of times. This experience is then used to level up your rank. The higher up you go in rank, the more ships that become available for you to buy. Along with the unlocking of new ships, your total amount of experience points is also needed to unlock new levels, with each level requiring a specific amount of experience before becoming available. Therefore, the more you play the game, the more levels you unlock. This mechanic is sheer and utter brilliance, and the reason I say Say that is because it allows the player to freely move between the levels they've unlocked. Unlike with most other games, particularly of the era Thrusty Ship inspires from, you can move between the levels you have unlocked freely. So if you're having particular difficulty with one level, you can simply move on to the next and come back whenever you want later. The EXP requirements for unlocking new levels isn't grindy either, so there is always going to be at least a few new levels available for you to play, resulting in you never being stuck and struggling to progress to the next level. There is always progression and you're free to progress how you see fit, giving you the freedom that few games ever do. Once you've completed a level, you'll unlock the time trial mode for it. The goal of time trial mode is to attempt to complete each level by the normal means of collecting the minimum amounts of cores to unlock the landing pad and then land as quickly as possible. Depending on how quick you are, you will be awarded either a gold, silver or bronze medal, with each medal requiring you to finish within their time limit. The time trial is a great addition that puts everything you've learned about navigating each level to the test, as you attempt to do it as quickly as possible to get the gold medal. This mode alone doubles the amount of content the game has, all the while being challenging and a lot of fun to play, not to mention the nostalgia it brings with the old school design. It certainly isn't for everyone, but for those that love a good and challenging time trial, Thrusty Ship has you more than covered and is bound to give you hours of fun. Then there is the completionist side of the game. If you are a completionist, Thrusty Ship is a game that is offering you the ultimate challenge. In total there are 100 achievements in the game which include finishing every level with each of the ships, landing a specific ship at a particular angle without touching anything but the landing pad, completing a particular level with a specific ship without touching anything, getting a gold medal in all the time trials, perfecting each level by collecting all the cores and landing without dying, the list goes on. A standard playthrough of the game takes about 15 hours, with the time trial adding a huge amount of hours on top of that. To then aim for 100% completion, you're looking at well over 150 hours of gameplay. Yes, this isn't something for everyone, but the fact that it is there makes for a staggering amount of gameplay for the game's asking price. Just a standard playthrough on its own is worth it, but completionists will get more than their money's worth. The editor allows you to create your very own levels in any way that you can possibly imagine using all the game's assets. You can choose what tiles to use, you can place refuel stations, junk, lasers, black holes and wormholes along with areas with gravity and the void. The only limit is your imagination. And once done, you can play them and even upload them to the Steam Workshop for others to play too. Like other features of Thrusty Ship, the level editor won't be for everyone, but for those who love to create their own levels or would simply like to give it a go and create their own fiendish designs, it is a great feature that adds countless hours of fun. As a whole, Thrusty Ship is a game that appeals to pretty much every type of old school gamer out there. For those who like to just play through the game in a more casual manner, they can. Are you a speedrunner? Thrusty Ship has you covered. Are you a completionist or achievement hunter? It has plenty of that. Thrusty Ship has something for everyone all the while offering an addictive and very enjoyable experience. A ton of content that most games could only dream of having along with some of the best and most intelligent and complex 2D level design I've seen in a long time. Thrusty Ship is an old school game that gives you a nostalgic trip that will bring you right back to the 90s. If there was anything to note, it would be definitely played with a controller if possible. It is perfectly functional and possible to play using just the keyboard, but if you have a controller, use it. It makes all the difference. The atmosphere of Thrusty Ship is great, with it changing depending on the environment of the level you're playing. Apex, the atmosphere takes a more laid back approach, with its soundtrack taking a very light and airy tone while keeping with the sci-fi theme. For Magnar, it takes a heavier beat approach to the music that fits in with the darker colour palette and the added difficulty. And then Hemner just goes all out with the electronic rock that works perfectly with the difficulty scaling and the general and extremeness of the level design. You feel like you've reached the ultimate challenge and that is exactly what it gives you. The atmosphere for each of the environments is fantastic and perfectly fits with the level design and general difficulty at the point you play them. And each has an equally as great soundtrack to accompany them. It is atmospheric bliss from start to finish. 
Thrusty Ship is a game that makes me realise that I'm slowly but surely getting old. But it is a game like this that makes me happy with the fact that I am. Thrusty Ship is a game that would really only appeal and be appreciated by those of my generation and the one before me. The younger generation of today would look at it with faces of puzzlement, skip it and go back to playing Fortnite or some other form of battle royale. It is a game made by a fan of the old school way of gaming for the fans of old school gaming. It has the challenge, it has the level design, and most of all, it has the gameplay all the while having a few modern twists that bring it to the next level. Thrusty Ship is one of, if not the best design game I've played all year. With the sheer level of polish, the carefully created and tested level design, the huge amount of playtime available, and the challenging yet brilliantly fun gameplay. Thrusty Ship is nothing short of being an absolute indie gem. An indie gem that brings you one of the biggest nostalgia trips to the 80s and 90s you will ever experience. And with that, I give Thrusty Ship a 9 out of 10. Thrusty Ship has been an absolute joy to play, but the fun doesn't end there. Right now the developer is working on an expansion that promises to introduce a new game mode, a whole new world with new levels, new ships with new abilities, new cores, new mechanics and an improved level editor. With such an expansion on the way, there is definitely no better time to get stuck into the game. And if it is anything like what is currently available, it is going to be fantastic and I can't wait.